Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I welcome you to another episode of Change Life Talk with Pastor O. Change Life Talk with Pastor Opie. Uh, we have a lot of women who have changed, you know, coming in contact with them. We have seen lives actually change, practically change. I pray that today's episode will touch your life. And you know, you will meet people who will share their practical stories of how God touched them and they changed. Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! It's a special changed life talk. I want to wish you a very Merry Christmas. <laughs> It's a Christmas edition. Merry Christmas. It's been a turbulent year and God has been so faithful. God has been so faithful. It's a joy to meet another Christmas. So many people went down this year. So many people died. But the Bible says that a living dog is better than a dead lion. Mm -hmm. We are grateful that we have met another Christmas. So I want to wish you and your family a very Merry Christmas. It's changed life talk again. And I'm so excited to have one of my favorite persons, my own sweetheart mm -hmm. on this program. I have my husband who I call my Otuko Peke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's the one that makes my heart beat. <laughs> sweetheart, I want to welcome you to this special, very special Change Life Talk. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've seen the Change Life Talk evolved and evolved, and I'm so happy to be here Thank God. also today. Thank God. Thank God. You know, Change Life Talk, in case you don't know, is all about changed lives. We have seen lives change. So many people, thousands of women, men, give their testimonies of what God has been doing in When Women Pray. When Women Pray has churned out a lot of lives. Jesus has been touching a lot of lives. One thing I want to say is that don't forget that the reason for Christmas is Jesus. He is the one that has given us the confidence, you know, for us to talk about changed life. And you know, changed life talk is about desiring, every Christian desiring to be like Jesus who was born in this season desiring to be like Jesus. You know, the other day I was thinking about it and I said, why change life? Why should our life change? Why should we mature? Because change life is about spiritual growth and maturity. And I wrote down some things here because the Lord wants us to change, to become mature because he needs us to expand his kingdom here on planet Earth. So that we become responsible children. Children who are not just pampered. You know, um, in 1 Corinthians 13, 11, Paul was speaking and he said, when I was a child, I spoke like a child. And he said, but when I grew up, I had to put away childish ways. So we cannot keep being children in Christ by allowing God to just love us, pour his love on us and all that. He, he, we, um, he wants us to mature so that he can give us responsibilities to carry out here on planet Earth. And one of the reasons why he has left us behind, because you need to ask God, why am I still here? I believe that you are here because the kingdom needs to expand. And so it's on your path. And I think that there are things that he wants us to start enjoying. When you get mature, you don't give your <coughs> little child a car to drive. No. When we get mature, when we grow up, when we change, God begins to put some things in our hands that, I mean, uh, we, are, we are like, wow. Because the word of God says that I commend you to God and to the world 
and to his word, which is able to build you up and give you. When he builds you up, he now gives you. There's something that he will give you. And that is when you get mature. When you get mature, there are things he will give you. Another thing why he wants us to change and, you know, be mature is so that our lives will reflect the nature of God. Our lives will reflect who God is. By the time we change, we see, you know, by the time we change, we see, people see God in us. People see Jesus in us. People, you know, I was telling a story the other day, sweetheart, about um, a missionary who came to somewhere in Nigeria and then um, he died. He was killed. And then um, one of the man was now preaching about Jesus. And one local boy said, I know him. I know Jesus. You see, I know where he was buried. When he said he died, they killed him. Say yes, I know where he was buried. And he took them to the missionary's grave and said, this was where he was buried. Something like that. You know, I heard that, a story like that. The boy believed that that man was Jesus because of his character. Mm. So can somebody actually see us and see Jesus? That's one of the things, you know, that's why he wants us to change. He wants to see his kingdom grow. He wants to make sure that through us, our generation will not sleep. Let our generation be awake. The Bible says about David that it was when he accepted the purpose of God that he fell asleep. But some of us have already fallen asleep before we serve the purpose of God. And finally on this, you know, he doesn't want us to just be powered by ambition, selfish ambition, selfishness. Because there are so many Christians who all they want is give me, give me, give me. I think we're getting, we should get to a point where we say, God, what do you want me to do for you? That is a changed life. What do you want me to do for you? And when we begin to ask, what do you want me to do for you? You know that you're a mature person. You know, they, your children, you feed them, you train them, and they get to a point where they start taking care of you. Hallelujah. Amen. So we carry out the burden of the Father. So, sweetheart, I will say that, you know, I've seen this in um, a lot of Christians now, a lot of um, people that pass through when women pray. I've seen women, you know, begin to take responsibility. I've seen marriages change because they have decided to deny themselves mm -hmm. and follow Christ. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, what would you say about changed lives? Well, I think you've said a lot already. Mm -hmm. um, the truth is, when you become a Christian, it is not just about you. We become a Christian and you become an ambassador for Christ. Yeah, yeah. And what does an ambassador do? Mm. He's supposed to model what his country stands for. Yeah. And so as ambassadors, that is what we're supposed to do. Now, if we look at the life of Paul, when he admonished the people, yeah. there's something he said like twice, I think in um, Second Timothy and in the book of Titus, he said, let unbelievers not blaspheme mm. because of your conduct. Mm. And so there's, there are so many reasons why you should change. Mm. There are so many reasons why people should see you and say, there's something that is different about this person. Yeah. And so it's imperative that we have to change when we become Christians Hallelujah. as we mature. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, there are some Christians that don't change, you know. They believe that God loves me and, um, um, I mean, I don't have to change. God loves me. He likes me the way I am, you know. <clears throat> and I say thing, like, some things like, um, God, um, no, somebody has said something like, um, God looks at my heart. God knows my heart. You understand? So I don't care what people think about me. <clears throat> but you see, but just like I said, God left you here for his kingdom to grow. Mm. He wants you to win souls, to attract people. So if he's the only one that knows your heart, what are you still doing here? <laughs> for me, personally, mm. I think you should go and meet him. Mm. Well, the Bible says, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. That so if your heart is good, we'll see it in your works. It will eventually show you. I mean, you cannot be a happy person inside and an angry person outside. Mm -mm. So 
you might say all the things you want to say in your heart, but what are we saying? Mm -hmm. The truth is the two will eventually converge. So yeah. there is no... When, when people say those kind of things, they are making excuses. You know, sometimes you hear people and those are people who are not mature mm -hmm. and not only as Christians, as people generally, you hear people say things like, if you know me, mm -hmm. if you know me, when should we know you? Is there a particular time we should come to see you to know you? Mm -hmm. We should know you from your everyday interactions, mm -hmm. all the things you do. Yeah. So your heart and your words and your actions should be in sync. That is it. That is when that they is say it. you have integrity. Yes. So that that's, it, that's my thought. You just, you just said it. You just said it. Your actions and your words should be in sync. Mm -hmm. There are people who are saying one thing and they are doing another thing. Mm -hmm. In fact, personally, my husband and I have met people who are supposed Christians that have duped us. They have said, you know, nice things and they'll come ask for money and they disappear. So um, I think um, it's time for someone out there watching us today to stop giving Christendom a bad name. Mm -hmm. That's what I'll say. Mm -hmm. Stop giving Christendom a bad name and begin to be an ambassador, just like you said, mm -hmm. for Christ. Christ came at this season, not for us to just run around and, you know, shout Merry Christmas and all, but for us to become. He came, left his comfortable throne, came down to planet Earth, just for us to have a life, just for us to build a kingdom here. Mm -hmm. When he was leaving, he told his disciples, tarry in Jerusalem, wait for the power. I've seen the things here on earth. You cannot carry out, you know, the gospel. He said, because he wanted them to spread the gospel from Jerusalem to Judea and to the utmost part of the world. Mm -hmm. And he said, see, you can't do it on your own. I'm going to I'm going to empower I'm going to power you by pouring out the Holy Ghost on you, so that you will carry it out. Mm -hmm. And you know that's where Galatians two twenty two will come up. Sorry, Galatians five twenty two when he now begins to say the fruit of the Spirit. By the time you are powered by the Holy Ghost, you begin to churn out mm -hmm. characters that will build the kingdom here on earth. Mm -hmm. And this character is patience, love kindness mm -hmm. you know and on and all you know this character some of us don't want the holy ghost to you know express himself through us by betting this character in us and then um, i just I, ju I, I just hope somebody out there is watching and getting mm -hmm. built up mm -hmm. talking about the fruit of the spirit mm -hmm. you know there are things that you cannot convince people because he just said something. Mm -hmm. I remember a story a long time ago when I initially started working and I had this colleague and he, he gave me a story about how he joined the group he joined. He's, he wasn't a Christian and he joined the occult. Mm -hmm. And how did he join the occult? Nobody ministered to him. Nobody tried to convince him to join the occult. He was ministered to by the actions and the courage of someone from the occult. He said, where they lived, this man was always neat. He was always nice. You never heard him quarrel. And so he looked at the man and the man was like the model of who he wanted to be. And gradually he started going to the man. He was the one pestering the man, wanting to be like the man. The man. Wow. And the man also was very sharp, wasn't in a hurry to give him everything. Say he was giving him piecemeal mm -hmm. until he got hooked. My God. And My God. so you might say, um, your, God sees your heart. He sees your heart, but your actions are chasing people from Christ. Mm. So let those actions show since you say your heart is good, mm -hmm. your body should change with it mm -hmm. and um, display that behavior, that character yeah. that will make people, you know, people now come and say, there's something about you. Mm -hmm. 
because that was what the guy was telling you that man see there's something about you mm. and he said that man will just laugh and you mm. say i want to be like you and mm -hmm. just like that i've seen it with with christians also mm. i've seen people say things like you know this born again people i remember someone telling me a story about a a young man they went for an interview they were invited people for an interview and they said this guy ordinarily was not qualified because of his um, credentials. Mm -hmm. But the guy had this confidence that he wanted an opportunity to do that interview. And they said, there's nothing to lose. Come and join us. And he sat for the interview. And he said when he finished, he was the most qualified person. He, he performed the best. And when this guy was trying to explain to me what has happened, he said, you know these born again people. Hmm. He said, because he has been doing evangelism, because he has been preaching, because he has been doing certain things. See, so he knew how to carry himself. He hmm. knew how to present himself. And before he knew it, he won the heart of the whole panel. Wow. And his paper qualifications were not the issue now. The thing was that this man was the best fit for the position. And that was how the guy got that wow. position. Wow. So, you cannot underestimate the power of living like a Christian, mm. of really displaying it. Mm. There's no point hiding it, doing it in the room, then you come out and you want to be like everybody else. It mm. doesn't work. Mm. Ah, so that you just remembered a story. <laughs> you know, you just reminded me of uh, something that happened recently. Mm. You know, where you go to do exercise mm. and you met this man. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and the man said... <laughs> And the man called you a pastor. Mm -hmm. He didn't know you from anywhere. He did not. He, he didn't know me. If I thought I knew him because I've seen him severally and that morning it was funny. I gave him a ride. I was saying he didn't come out for exercise. I said, I did. I came out very early, but because I was going to work, I came out early. Say, ah, you're going to work. I thought you were a pastor. <laughs> <laughs> but... And you see, he has not spoken to this man before. Mm. So people form opinions about you. Yeah. Whether you've, you've spoken or not, it's what they see, mm. how you carry yourself, what you say. People begin to form opinions about you. So truly, you can imagine, talking about changed life now, mm. someone who knew you five years ago mm. and knew that before... They, f they say five. You say five and six and you've slapped somebody or broken someone's head. Mm -hmm. Then suddenly he sees you and you're calm and you're the peacemaker in the place. The person will want to know what has happened changed this person. What happened I, need to to, I need to find out what happened. Hmm. So there is power in changed life. There's power. And you know, you say... Will I say it's a subtle way or is a strong way of evangelism? It is. Yeah. It is. Because some people are, you know, you remember one video we watched together? This man had finished preaching and next mm. thing he was fighting. He had finished preaching and next thing he was fighting with the people that he preached to. Mm. It, was, it, was, it was all over social media, you know? So I think there's power in your character. There's power. Some people might be shy to speak, but I tell you the truth, their character speak volume. Your character can speak volume in your home, in your environment, in your, in your neighborhood, in where you work, you know, at your office mm -hmm. and all that. So, and your home, like um, um, recently, one of the people that I, I, I spoke with on Change Life, she said she was a drunkard. Mm -hmm. And she stopped drinking. And just by that, her husband became born again. Mm. That's very powerful. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says that, you know, that how, you know, the Bible was telling us that, how do you know whether by your character, he was talking to women, by your character, you can change your husband. Mm. Not by your words. I think it's more difficult to change a man by your words. <laughs> you know, it's like it's difficult for women to preach to men? Not exactly. You know, there's a saying that um, you cannot convince someone against his will. Yeah. So yeah. what happens when you're talking and you're talking and you're talking and you're not 
also demonstrating the thing. You're trying to change someone against his will. Oh, wow. But when the person is seeing you and mm -hmm. is seeing the thing, what happens is the person starts telling himself. Yeah. He starts preaching to himself mm -hmm. and asking himself, why can't I be better? Wow. So it's not because it's That's more difficult to preach to a man or to a woman, but because generally you cannot change people against their will. Wow. So that's why you, your life matters. You, how you live your life is very important. It speaks volumes. This is amazing. You know, sometimes you, because we don't know how... I've seen women who um, drive their men further from... You know, in fact, you, you can even, she can even meet a man in church and end up not making the man not to go to church again. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying is by this. Yes, I know. Conversely, now talking about change life. Yeah. It's a big responsibility, yeah. especially when you, when you read uh, Apostle Paul talking about don't make people blaspheme God because of your character. When you have declared that this is how you are, Mm -hmm. and you start doing it, it's a big burden for you also. So it's something that you should carry with that responsibility. Mm -hmm. Now, when people know you for a certain behavior and you've won some people over because of that, yeah. suddenly, maybe due to one small pressure or something, you just change suddenly. Mm -hmm. What happens is the person just starts reevaluating and saying, maybe all these things was to gain something from me. Mm. And the person just loses all interest. Mm. Especially if the person hasn't come to that point where he's now convinced of himself. Yeah. If he's still relying on what he sees from you to um, remain the way he is, then of course, as soon as you change, the person is convinced that you're a phony, and all these things were employed to get something. Mm. And mm. maybe because you didn't get it, or maybe um, small pressure, you've shown your true color. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. May the Lord help us. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> May the Lord help us, because um, um, I, I now understand some things. You know, that's why some women will come to me saying that, uh, they, they say things like, uh, when I began to change, my husband started suspecting me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> even the men have spoken to me. They say things like, um, um, he now said, sweetheart, tell me the truth. What do you want? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, they say things like, what do you want? Just, just tell me what you want. Just mm -hmm. tell me what you want. I'll give you. Mm -hmm. You know, because that's not who you really are. Mm -hmm. So maybe he's thinking that you're, you're, just, you're just acting mm -hmm. just to get something. Mm -hmm. But your character needs to be consistent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> consistency is important. So consistency is important, whether under pressure, mm -hmm. we need to be consistent just to carry out this gospel, just to carry out the things that, you know, that no wonder Jesus was asking Peter. He asked him several times. He said, lovest thou me? He asked mm -hmm. him three times, do you love me? Peter said, I love you. You know, so that for me, love changes everything. I remember when I met my husband, I changed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when I say I changed, everybody knew that I had, had fallen in love. Mm -hmm. They are like, there's something about what is shocking. Who is this person? And I, I couldn't make a, a sentence without talking about my husband. Then I'll just say, and then my friends will say something. I'll say, you know what? I'll ask, I'll ask my husband. Mm -hmm. I'll ask him. So some people are like, please go away. Who is this person? I need to know this person. You know, so it's just the same thing with Jesus. You know, when you, when you meet him, you just be talking about him. I remember... I always share this story, you know, of how you told me not to, to make a U-turn at one junction, in, mm -hmm. then in Port Harcourt. I remember my husband, um, you know, we're, we're driving and I told him, I said, sweetheart, this is a shortcut. Can we just make this? My husband said, no, you can't turn here. You know, you know, we, we drove past it and he said, you know, advising me that you, that there's no, that, that place is a no U-turn something, mm. you know, no U-turn Turn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that you can't turn here. So I was like, really? But we're going to join hold, hold up. But we can just turn here and then not join any hold up. You know, that's one thing about shortcut. One thing I've learned from my husband is don't take the shortcut. Take the longer cut, 
do the right thing. And so after he told me that, do you know because of the love I have for him, I couldn't turn at that junction again. Sometimes I'll make up my mind, I'll say, no, I'll turn at, the, at that junction today because I can see hold up. But by the time I get there, I'll just drive past. I think that's what God wants us to do. So he's asking you a question. Do you love me? He asked Peter three times, lovest thou me? Simon, bad Jonah, <laughs> lovest thou me? God is asking you, Jesus is asking somebody out there, do you love me? Do you really love me? Then he said, feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. Do you really love him? If you love Jesus, I think you will begin to make some adjustments. Mm -hmm. Because even um, with men, mm. I see when a man loves a woman, mm. he makes adjustments. Mm -hmm. Just like you're here now. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're a very busy person, mm. but today you made adjustments to be here. Mm. So that thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, it's my pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> you know, talking about love, mm -hmm. Sometimes we just shout, love, love, love. You, I love God. I love Christ. Mm -hmm. The truth is, mm -hmm. none of us have met him. Yeah. And if you want to show that you love Christ, mm -hmm. it is how you love humans mm -hmm. that determines whether you love Christ. And that is what this mm -hmm. changed life does. So you, ah, you have it so in your head that you love Christ. But how do we know you love Christ? Because if we treat, if we, if we go on the way we, we do with other people, with people normally, but we say we love Christ, the truth is, if Christ were to appear to you, how will you treat him? Hmm. You will end up treating him shabbily. Hmm. So the true test of you love Christ is how you love people. Wow. So you need to, you need to love one, that is what um, having a changed life is. And you know, for me, talking about shortcuts, it's not something that comes sh uh, suddenly. Don't say, because I've declared today I love Christ, everything will change. Mm. But it's a, a, an intentional process that gradually you start adjusting, you start exhibiting the fruits of the Spirit you start being more patient with people mm -hmm. because um, sometimes I, I I look at some things I do. Yesterday I was looking at um, <laughs> what I was doing with my daughter and I was laughing. I said, <laughs> a few years ago, I would have gone to wake her and say, you forgot this thing. But I asked myself, is it so important? It's not critical. Mm. The world will not end. Mm -hmm. So the truth is you need to show that love to humans. Mm. The more you show love to humans, the more you truly be able to love Christ. Hallelujah. Because truly you've not seen Christ. Hmm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, see mm. that I, I want to read the scripture in 1 John 4.20. 1 John 4.20. It says, whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or a sister is a liar. Mm -hmm. Wow. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God, my God, my God. You know, because a lot of people say they love God, but they hate people. They hate um, people's gods. They, they, they can't be patient with some character. You know, I can't stand this. I can't stand that. You know, I think um, this Christmas, I would like us to make room for people, mm. make accommodation, you know. I used to be a very impatient person with people. And um, I see myself changing by accommodating people more because I want to see them change. <clears throat> I see that, you know, one thing the love of God does, when you, when, you, when you show the love of God to somebody who is undeserving, especially, loving the unlovable, when you show the love of God to someone who is unlovable, I see the people change. You begin to change that person gradually. Initially, it might look very difficult. You know, you say, Pastor, you don't know what you're talking about. I've loved this person. I've done this for this person. And it's not working. It will eventually work. Mm -hmm. 
like I gave a story of how um, I started when I when I go to pick my children in school, I see everybody carrying face and all that. I just decided I made you know a personal adjustment by greeting everybody, whether it's a maid that came to pick the the their, their word or whoever. I will greet you first, whether you are older. You know, one of these things in this area, in this um, region is, um, I mean, I'm older than you, so you should greet me first. So I decided I was going to greet everybody, the security man. Hello, good afternoon, good afternoon. I was, I kept greeting. There were some people that would not answer you. Do you know, funny enough, there are some people that would not answer you. They'll be wondering, why is she greeting me? Does she want to beg me for something? Mm. You know? And all that. So I remember one particular man, whenever I greeted him, he would just look at me and pass. Until one time I didn't go to pick the children from school for a long time. And one day he saw me. The man ran from one end of the school and came and said, Good afternoon, madam. Where have you been? And I was like, So it was working. I didn't know it was working. I could have just said, This man is not answering. So I will stop greeting. So I think the love of God, when you show people the love of God, especially to those who don't deserve it, because this Christmas, I would like someone to go out there and love. Mm. Love the people who don't deserve to be loved. Just go out there and love and show love to people. That will bring them closer to Christ. Mm. That's what I believe. Yeah, truly. And you know, this Christmas season, of course, we're celebrating the birth of Christ. Mm -hmm. He came for a reason. And um, everyone uses the opportunity, even the unbelievers, those who do not believe in Christ. You see, we all use this opportunity to, to give. And some people are looking forward to receive. Some people are looking forward to give. But I think the, the biggest gift we can give is love. Mm. In this season, Let's use the, the excuse of the season to really show love. Yeah. Show love to yeah. anybody you can. It's, it's a season that opens doors. There are some people who would not ordinarily look your direction, but this season opens that opportunity. And I say it's one big season for evangelism mm -hmm. because people come to you you get to meet more people yeah show love let people know that this person exists and this person stands for this mm -hmm. and let people see that change life maybe you've not had the opportunity throughout the year to showcase yourself you've been very busy this season let people see you more let people see that you love. The little you have, share. Mm. And you see, it, that little changes a lot. Mm -hmm. So we're happy. Um, it's Christmas again. The love of God was shared to us through Christ. And we're representing him. It's our mandate to also extend that love to everyone we meet and share the love this season and make people want to meet that person behind the season. Mm. Make people want to know why we're celebrating this season, why there's so much uh, laughter and celebration and merriment in the air. This season makes, gives us the opportunity to share who is this man all about. Mm. You know, so that as we were talking, I was just um, thinking that you were pivotal to my change. Mm. You, um, you affected me in many ways. And uh, I believe that WWP was bettered by the things you did in the secret with me. First of all, I want to thank you for the way you have shown me love. You have loved me unreservedly and, you know, encouraged me in carrying out my divine mandates. Mm. I am feeling very emotional now because mm. uh, it's so true. Mm. You you know, from the time you taught me how to drive, you know, you taught me how to drive. Mm. 
You gave me wings to fly. I remember when you put me on the, 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 the driver's seat and you said, sweetheart, move. I'm here with you. Don't be afraid. Mm. And I put my leg on the pedal. You said something. You said, you can do it. Mm. You can do it. Go ahead. Press the pedal. Go ahead. And I started driving that same day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not ashamed to, you know, say this thing to the world of how you have encouraged me. You have, you have supported me. You have, you have shown me integrity. So much integrity that I, I, I learned integrity from you. I, I thought I was. I had integrity until I met you, and then you began to show me what it is to have integrity and. I cannot thank you enough. Mm. I can't thank you enough. I, I see practical Christianity with you. Mm. And that has really encouraged me in this assignment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, my love. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind thank my you. tears. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they are tears of joy. You know, yeah, they are, they are real. <laughs> they are real. I want to say thank you to my husband for being on this program. He has really encouraged me to carry out this divine mandate. And I want to say to somebody out there, um, it's, not, um, it's not about what you say, it's about what you do. I want to say to a man, my husband is here. I want to say to a man, encourage that woman by shamine her. You know, the Bible calls God our Jehovah Shammah. He shamas us. He covers us. And my husband has really done that for me. He's the one that sees my tears. Sometimes when I've been badly beaten outside, I just go to him and I cry. And he just comforts me and, you know, puts me back on the track and say, go, you can do it. And I don't know. I'm, I'm talking to a man out there. I, I think that's part of changed life. You could, you could help that woman become all that she could be. And you, woman, humble yourself and, you know, embrace his love. You know, one of the things I, I, I had to learn was to go in my husband's space. Sometimes when he tells you, you know, when my husband, when, sweetheart, when you tell me, calm down, it was for something. And you know, that's, that's what God does to us. He will say, calm down, my daughter. But you want it now, 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 now. He's saying, calm down. Can you calm down? I don't know who I'm talking to. I just feel, feel I'm talking to somebody. Can you just calm down and allow? Because sometimes he has a bigger picture. He has a bigger picture. I've seen that with my husband. He has a bigger picture. He just wants you to calm down. And then he encourages you to float. Sweetheart, can you, can you give a last word? <laughs> and then... It close. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, sweetheart. Thank you for um, all the kind words. <laughs> uh, I think you're amazing. <laughs> thank you. You have made it easy. And I think I've changed also. <laughs> oh, I, I know I've changed. Yeah, you have. And I, I know we're still working progress. Yeah. And for everyone watching, you can always be a better you. Mm -hmm. And that is what Christ came to do. Mm -hmm. His desire is that we get better daily. His desire is that we do not stay on the places we have fallen, but look unto him. He says the author and the finisher. Mm -hmm. He has written your story and he is ready to support you to live that story and when you hold on to christ there are infinite possibilities and as you do those things that he has laid in your heart you see that day by day you get better mm -hmm. better in your relationships better in all your activities and the truth is when we talk about changed lives it is not a contest mm -hmm. but yeah. it is something to transform every 
part of you mm -hmm. and everything around you. Mm -hmm. So if we have changed women, changed men, the home become better. Yeah. And as the home becomes better, the country becomes better. Yeah. And if we can do the little in the spaces we occupy, you see, gradually we begin to see a transformation yeah. of our nation. Yeah. And yeah. for me, that is what we should strive to achieve as a people that the nation, our communities will be, will be better because we came yeah. at the end. Yeah, thank you so much, Sita. Thank you. This is very powerful. That's a very powerful word you just mm. said, that the nation will be better because we came. And you know, Sita, while you were talking, I just remembered what Jesus did with that woman who was caught in adultery. We point fingers. He told them, he said, anyone that doesn't have a sin, cast the first stone. Mm. We point fingers, yet we have a lot to do. Mm. And so I think, just like you said, we should start working on ourselves instead of pointing fingers. For those of you who are Christians, instead of criticizing other Christians, I think you should start with you. Start with the little. I said, I started greeting everybody I met in my children's school. I think you should start from your own community. Start from your own little end and start doing your little. Thank you for listening. Thank you for, you know, sharing. I want you to keep sharing the broadcast. I want you to inv keep inviting people. You can watch it again. Thank you for being a blessing. Moreover, I want to say thank you for changing. Thank you for changing. And that's how change comes even to our nation, Nigeria. God bless you. I don't know if I can pray for somebody today that is Christmas. <laughs> that God will give you a Christmas gift. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. For that person that is watching, that person that is believing you for a Christmas gift. Spirit of God, flood the heart of that person with your love. Amen. Let your unfailing love wrap that family. Let that family not be lacking in anything. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray, oh God, my Father, that by your Holy Ghost, you will empower someone to change. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Cover us with the power that is in the blood of Jesus. Spirit of God, we have less than seven days to the end of the year. I pray, oh God, that Lord, you will keep us from evil. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Protect us from wicked and unreasonable men. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Cover us with the blood of Jesus and declare, O oh God, that the spirit of God, the spirit of death will pass over our homes. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Lord. And blessed be your holy name forever. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us. Adore him, oh come let us adore him, Christ the Lord. We, we wish, wish you a Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. God bless you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. Pray to cry, touch the heart.